Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to analyze this beam which is being loaded with a uniformly varying load. There is a triangular load acting on this beam. The beam load starts with the zero magnitude from this hinge support and ends with a 4 kN per meter load ends at the support beam. So there is a uniformly varying load or we can say a triangular load acting on this beam and the beam length is 8 meter. So we have to find out first of all the support reactions and then we can draw the shear force diagram for this beam. So to find out the support reactions, let's consider this reaction is Ra and this reaction is Rb acting in the upper direction. Now to start with the calculating the support reactions, first we can say First, we can calculate the load acting on this beam. There is a triangular load acting on this beam. So, we have to find out first of all the total load acting on this beam. As this load is varying, so we have to calculate the actual total load acting on this beam. So, to find out this load, we have to find out the area of this load. This is a triangular load. So, we have to find out the area of this triangle. So, if this is any triangle, and let's suppose this is the base B and this is the height of the triangle H. So we can find the area of this triangle by this formula half B into H. Similarly, this triangle is a base of 8 meter and has a height of 4 kN per meter. So we can find out the area of this triangle. So the area of this triangle will be half base into height where half base is 8 meter multiplying with height height is 4 kilonewton per meter so meter meter will be cancelled so we are just remaining with the kilonewton unit so if we multiply these two so we got 16 kilonewton so it means 16 kilonewton is the load acting on this beam 16 kilonewton is the total load acting on this beam and this load will act at the centroid of this beam. This load will act at this point. This is a magnitude of 16 kN. So I will also explain now that why it acts at the centroid. Now if we look to this triangle. So the centroid of the triangle, if let's suppose this is L of the triangle, is the length of the triangle. So the centroid of the triangle will be at this point. This will be the centroid for this triangle. For the rectangle, if this is length rectangle L, so the centroid is the half. So this will be the L by 2. Similarly, this is L by 2. While for triangle, this is not same as rectangle. So the centroid will act at a distance of 1 L by 3 here. This will be L by 3 and this distance will be 2L by 3. So this is the centroid for the triangle. So this load will act at a distance of 1 third of it. This will be the 1 third of it and this will distance will be the 2 third of it. Because this load will act at the centroid of the triangle. So we know that the load acting at the centroid of this triangle. Now we can calculate the support reactions. So starting with the support reactions, let's consider the summation of moment at point B equal to zero. And the clockwise moment is taken as positive and the anti-clockwise moment is considered as negative. Now this Ra is creating moment here about point B in the clockwise direction. It creates moment in the clockwise direction. So it will be taken as positive. So R a multiplying it with the moment arm because moment is force multiplied with the moment arm. So we R A is the force and R is the moment. So moment is this distance from this support R A up to this B point. So this whole distance is 8 meter. So moment arm is 8 meter. Now this was the load. This was the reaction R A that creates moment about point B in the clockwise direction. Now there is also load 16 kN that creates a moment here about point B 
in the anti-clockwise direction about point B. So it will be negative because we assume that the anti movement in the anti-clockwise direction is negative. So it will be minus 16 multiplying it with the moment arm. The moment arm is this distance which is half the one third by eight. One third into eight equal to zero. Summation of moment at point B equal to zero. So now eight R A. If you move this value into the right side, we got 16. Multiply 8 divided by 3. So 8RA comes out to be 42.66. Now if you divide this by 8, so we got RA is equal to 42.66 divided by 8. We got 5.33 kN. So this is the RA reaction here. 5.33 kN. Now, how to find out this Rb? Similarly, we can use this equation that summation of all the vertical forces is equal to zero. Now, the upward forces are considered as positive and the downward forces are considered as negative. The upward forces are Ra and Rb while the downward force is 16 kN acting in the downward direction, summation of all the vertical forces is equal to 0. Now, Ra is known to us, so it will be 16 minus Ra, or we can say Rb is equal to 16 minus 5.33, so we got Rb equal to 10.66 kN. So this is the support reactions here at point B, 10.66 kN. Now we find out our support reactions for this B. Now to move forward in order to draw the shear force diagram so we can draw the reference line for the shear force. So this will be the reference line and this will be the horizontal reference line and this is the shear force diagram in the unit of kilonewton. So this will be the zero zero and above value will be taken as positive and below value will be considered as negative. Now to find out or to draw the shear force diagram we know the support reactions are a starting from this point is 5.33 acting in the upper direction. So we can move this in upper direction is 5.33. Now this is a load acting in the downward direction. This load is a triangular load acting in the downward direction. And we know that this whole load is, we found out that the whole load is 16 kN acting in the downward direction. So we can subtract this 5. We can subtract this 5.33 which was acting in the upward direction. It was positive. Now 16 is acting in downward direction so it will be negative. So we got minus 10.66. So it means we should bring this value up to this point into minus 10.66. Because 5.33 was positive so it was above the reference line. Now if we subtract this whole load acting downward direction it was minus 16. So we get minus 10.66 so minus 10 means that we should plot this value below the reference line and then we should connect this line in this way like in this way so this is the shear force diagram for this beam it should be also kept in mind that this load is a one degree line or we can say the linear line so this shear force diagram will be a two degree line or we can say a parabolic line. So this was all about the how to solve the beam when there is a triangular or uniformly varying load acting on the beam. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily 7 engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.